iTunes is a great way of managing our media and devices and leaving a lot of the more complex aspects behind the scenes. This works well a lot of the time, but every once in a while there's some things that leave a lot to be desired in terms of iTunes' functionality. The device backup feature is one of these features. Normally it works perfectly fine, but when I upgraded my iPod Touch to iOS 4, I noticed a very disturbing feature. Before installing the upgrade, I did what I thought was my due diligence by doing a sync and backup before installing. Every time you plug in and sync your device with iTunes, you'll automatically back up the device. But to do it manually, right-click the device icon in the left column and select Backup. Now, if you go into Preferences and Devices, you'll see a list of all the backups you have. As you see here, the time of my most recent backup was today at 8.31 p.m. And since it's still 8.31 p.m., I know that this is the backup that I just ran. The problem I noticed was that after I installed iOS 4, iTunes did an automatic sync and backup, overriding my most recent backup. If I'd had a problem and need to do a restore, I would have lost nearly three months worth of data on my iPod, simply because iTunes automatically deleted it. In this video, I'll detail just how you work around this problem. First, let's find out where these backup files are. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find the full file paths in the notes of this video, and you can also find them on my website at ThoughtShots.com. For the Mac, the file path is Library, Application Support, Mobile Sync, and Backup. Here's where we'll find our backup files. Based on the file names, you can sort of guess at what file corresponds to which backup. We're interested in the most recent backup, so we'll just open up this most recent one at the top that doesn't have any time and date information. Just to make sure though, we can look at the folder info. Here you can see it was last modified today at 8.31 p.m., which, if you'll remember, was the last time I ran my backup. I'm going to right-click and select Duplicate on this folder. Windows users can just do a copy and paste. And I'm going to make a copy of this backup file. You'll see the new folder automatically get a copy at the end of the folder name. That's fine for the folder itself, but in iTunes you'll have two backups with the same name. If they have the same name, how are we going to differentiate them? This requires doing a pretty simple hack. Go into the folder and find the info.plist file. This is an XML file that provides iTunes with metadata on the backup. All you need to do is find the line that says key, display name key. The line under it, in between the string tags, is the name that will show up in iTunes. And currently you'll see it's just the name of my device. So let's change it to something that makes sense. In this case, I'll just add the date and time of my backup. Now if we go back into iTunes and reopen the preferences screen, you can see the name I just typed into that field, as well as two backups with a timestamp of 8.31 p.m. Now just to make sure that backup sticks, I'll go ahead and run another backup. Now if I go back into the preferences screen, we can see that the most recent backup, the one I just ran, has a timestamp of 8.35 p.m. This overwrote our most recent backup that was set at 8.31 p.m., but you'll notice you also have another backup saved at 8.31 p.m. This file should now be safe from being overwritten. If I want to restore from this backup, I'll just right-click the device and select Restore from Backup. Then I can select the June 22nd backup and hit Restore. Thanks for watching. As always, you can view this video or any of my other technology learning videos for free at ThoughtShots.com, where you can also find a full transcript of this video, as well as show notes and related web links.